All righty. Welcome back to another episode of Two Point Sports. Big one today. Oklahoma securing another commitment, this time four-star defensive back Malik Hawkins. Last name that we should all recognize, not only because he's a legacy, but his older brother is already on campus and sounds like he has been killing it in spring practice. Yeah, but before sounds like we he's get... having a hell of a spring. <laughs> yes, it is. Before we get too much further, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, smash the like button. Helps us out a ton. Gets us to, to get to more people, reach more Oklahoma fans, more like-minded college football uh, lovers. So help us out a lot. And if you prefer to listen to audio, Check out Spotify and Apple Podcasts. We're there as well. Leave us a rating. Helps us out a ton, just like leaving a like here. Let's get into it. All right, Malik Hawkins, four-star defensive back. This is one of those poorly kept secrets. It did seem like Texas was really trying to push there for the commitment of uh, Malik Hawkins and, and getting his services down in Austin, but very much how OU was trying to do uh, to try to win away Zena. Omazulu in the last class, the, the defensive lineman, but he ended up going to Texas to join his brother, Malik. Well, maybe thought about the idea of playing in Austin. It was too hard to pass up the opportunity to play with his older brother, Mike, in Norman and follow in his dad's footsteps a lot, you know, more so than Mike is because his dad was also a defensive back at the University of Oklahoma. Went on to be a decent pro player, so he's got. He has the blueprint in front of him, a guy that can show him the ropes and how he did it back in his day. Brandon, what do you think about Malik and where he puts Oklahoma in that defensive back room? Because it's pretty loaded. It's loaded. And I think with, with Hawkins too, I think, you know, with, with his dad being a Sooner alum and with Big Brother being on campus already, I think if he were to commit to Texas, uh, they may have cut him off. So he really didn't have a choice there. So, I mean, I think he made the, he made the right call, I think, going to Oklahoma, obviously. Reminds me of Eli Bowen, Peyton Bowen situation. Obviously, we had Peyton Bowen. Texas, it seemed, made a pretty strong push for Eli. Ultimately, he committed Oklahoma. Um, it, it's it's hard to to beat out um, a school when their brother plays there. And we've seen it a lot of times here, but worked out in our favor today. Um, Lee Hawkins, I think, is going to be a hell of a player for Oklahoma. That that defensive back room, along with the defensive line, I think, um, the, the future of both of those rooms uh, just seems super, super um, high. The, 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 there, there's a lot of talent there. With the Bowens, the Hawkins now, Jeremiah Newcomb. I mean, there, there's so many guys that we have in that room for the future that I think are going to be really good. He's got great size at six one, almost 200 pounds for for Hawkins here. I think he can play a lot, uh, whether outside or in the slot. He's going to have an opportunity to to uh, to do some things. Uh, obviously, his dad can help him out, show him the ropes a little bit, like you mentioned. Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's it's a pretty good day here. Yeah, in that room as we both said here, is pretty stacked, especially with young talent. And you look at it going into the 2024 season, you're going to have your two returning starters, Gentry Williams and Woody Washington back. Hopefully Gentry can sit a little bit healthier than he was last year. But when he was on the field, I think there's an argument to be made that he was the best corner, outside yeah. corner at least, for the Sooners. Um, you know, Kendall Dolby playing the slot more than likely, or Cheeto. You know, he'll, he'll be playing Pat, uh, very good pass coverage, but... Uh, from the outside perspective, Woody Washington and Gentry will be there. Then you look at the future. Macari Vickers got some time last year. Heard a lot about Josiah Wagner. Jacoby Johnson was a summer enrollee, yeah. so probably didn't all those get guys as much. played a little bit last year. Yeah, he played a all bit. Three he of those probably freshmen, didn't get yeah. as much time as he would have if he was a spring enrollee. Mm -hmm. So you look at just that class alone, and then you've got guys coming in from from last year's recruiting class and. Jaden Hardy, uh, Jaden Hardy getting a lot of rave too, and and from, yeah, from spring, as you from mentioned, and now you have Hawkins adding to the fold in this 2025 class. That that the, that defensive back room is very young, and maybe a place where Oklahoma want might want to look at the portal, just from for a little bit of, of experience going into next season, but. If they don't, I don't think that'd be a crazy thing for them to avoid to like seem look at and see it's unnecessary because you've got a lot of young talent there that'll just need the opportunity to play, especially this season, so they can be more comfortable going into twenty twenty five. Yeah, for next year they added um, the San Diego State transfer, Dejan Malone. 
Desmond uh, yeah. at, at, D, at, at DB. So he's a guy that'll probably be in the fold right away. But yeah, I mean, having Woody back, having having Gentry come back, obviously hope the the health thing. We hope he stays around. Kendall Dolby, that seems to be your your uh, your core there, your your nucleus of, of guys. And, but those are good dudes to learn from. And then you got Peyton Bowen in, 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 at safety with Billy Bowman, probably the two best. I mean, I don't know. I, I'll I think I'd take that 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 safety tandem with about anybody in the country. Um, so there, there's there's a lot of talent in that defensive back room and the young guys are, are, are going to be there too. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very exciting room. Yeah. I mean, the, the look for the future here defensively, it's, it's only up and that's what you expect in a Brent Venables defense. Um, and Zach Alley, I mean, he's got a lot of really good talent to work with. I know people were not fans of Ted roof. And I think we're, we definitely didn't hate him, but we definitely saw the deficiencies. Like probably a lot of you saw. Um, but he did a good job with what he had, and I think the linebacker position is definitely one that's ca- kind of taking a little bit of a maybe a step back because it's needing to reset in how it's being recruited. But outside of that, these defensive coaches are putting on a clinic in how to rebuild and retool a, a defensive roster that really when they got their hands on it was pretty not blank. very good yeah well yeah, yeah blank slate they had to work from <laughs> from very little and that's no to none you know no disrespect to the guys that were on the roster but when you look at the roster when they came in to what it is now most of them either didn't play and hit the transfer portal or graduated playing very little because uh, they ended up bringing guys that they believed in a little bit more and saw more upside in yeah so um... You also got a shout out. I mean, just the the. I mean, the work that Jay Valai, Brandon Hall are doing is is right up there with the, with the guys like Todd Bates. That you want to keep those three dudes in Norman as long as possible because the way that they recruit guys and and, and bring in talent, they're gonna have their their fair share of opportunity um, in their careers to um, you know promote and get higher. So you want to retain those guys as long as possible because they won't be here forever. Oh yeah, and now going into the SEC, they're just gonna have more eyes on their ability to coach and their ability to recruit. I mean, you already saw teams go after DeMarco Murray this offseason. And I'm not saying they weren't before, but this season seemed pretty serious. Yeah. I mean, Jay Vlai is a guy that, when he first got hired, we talked about it. He Before he got to Oklahoma, he had never really spent more than one season at any of his stops. This will be his longest tenure anywhere. Would not be surprising if, if, he, if the defensive backs do well this year. I mean, last year... They were number one in the Big 12 and uh, right up there amongst the best in the nation in creating turnovers and overall picks. So if they perform again and do a little bit better with, you know, bending less and avoiding any breaks, That's he's going to be a guy that's getting a lot of looks it's for defensive coordinator spots. 100%. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You just got to keep them as long as you can and, and you know, get his... Get as deep as you can in in, in, in the into the postseason while you got them. They're, I mean, they're not irreplaceable because I don't think anybody is. But it's going to be whoever gets that job whenever they leave is going to have some huge shoes to fill. It won't be easy for sure. Um, but that's it for this video, Brandon. End of video challenge. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a great day to be a Sooner. We got we got another commitment here in Malik Hawkins, and obviously just give us your Malik Hawkins thoughts, or even your Mike Hawkins thoughts, or even his dad Mike Hawkins thoughts. I just talk about the hawkins hawkins family the hawkins legacy at oklahoma is just continuing to grow Uh, make sure to participate there like comment subscribe (laughs) going back smash that like button helps us out a ton if you're an audio listener hit us hit the follow on your preferred audio platform and leave a rating helps us out a ton thank you guys all for watching we will see you next time